Today we are doing a thrift store challenge and we are headed to Crate and Barrel to get some much needed inspiration for summer. And then we are headed over to the thrift store to see what we can come up with for a whole lot less. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. We are going to start off this video talking about a material you will see a lot of at Crate and Barrel and CB2, and that is metal and iron. It's very fitting for that modern and minimal design aesthetic, and they carry it in the forms of candle holders, metal trays, metal bowls. So whenever I'm out thrifting, that is also a material I'm going to be looking out for is metal and iron. So I came across these two metal wall sconces. Just one little problem though, I think the paint job was just a little bit messy. I saw a lot of brush strokes, so I decided to first go in with some Rust-Oleum textured stone spray paint. When you're using spray paint, make sure that your nozzle is facing this little dot here because that's gonna give you the maximum output for that spray paint can. I'm gonna apply one light coat of this stone spray paint and then let that dry. And then I'm gonna go in with a matte black spray paint over top of it to almost give it the illusion that it's made of iron instead. I did two coats of the matte black spray paint and then I went in with a matte clear sealer. And because these are going to go next to my Cater Bully painting that I picked up from Crate and Barrel almost two years ago now, I decided that I didn't feel comfortable lighting any real candles here. So I'm going to be using these ones I picked up off Amazon that are battery operated. So they give just such a nice ambient light at night. And I think that this is an affordable way to achieve a high end look on a budget. Another piece of decor I noticed a lot at Crate and Barrel was kind of these blown glass vases that have almost this kind of organic shape. So when I went to the thrift store, I came across this vase that looked so similar to the one from Crate and Barrel, but was only $3. So I just filled it with greenery just like they did. Again, a very affordable way to achieve that look for less. Another material used a lot in Crate and Barrel home decor is stone. They'll use it in lamp bases, in wall art, and even just as bowl filler, which we'll talk about a little bit later on in this video. So whenever I'm out thrifting, I'm looking for pieces that I can maybe transform to get this sort of like stone-like look. So I found this really great quality mirror for just $8. It was a nice oval shape. Step one for this project, before I add any spray paint initially, I just wanted to make sure that the mirror was nice and protected. So I'm just going to wrap it and then use some frog tape so I don't get any spray paint on the actual inside of the mirror. With everything taped down, I just took a box cutter and removed the excess tape so I could apply my spray paint onto the frame. For the stones, I wanted to use these ones from Dollar Tree because they were just a little bit more affordable than anything else I had seen. So I'm gonna go in first with some matte Mod Podge and apply just the stones around the flattest part of the mirror just to basically cut down on time because I was not going to be able to do that technique for kind of the outside and the inside of the mirror. So for that, I had to use hot glue. And if your hot glue is ever pulling a lot of strands that you wanna get rid of, make sure you're using a blow dryer on a cool setting and that will really help to efficiently kind of clean up your project so you can keep working. So I just hot glued every single stone on to the exterior and then the interior of this frame. And then I just basically acted like it was a puzzle found stones that fit in that specific spot best. And that really wrapped up this project. It was time consuming, but I think I get this kind of summery feel in my space and it was so affordable. No matter how bad your thrift store is, one thing I promise you guys you can find is large scale glass pieces because Crate and Barrel, while has beautiful glass pieces, I think you can find things that are so similar at your thrift store for so much more affordably. And it's always worth checking there first before spending $49.95 on a glass vase that you probably could have spent five bucks on at a garage sale or at a thrift store. So I ended up finding this large scale glass vase for just over $5 at the Goodwill and I wanted to fill it with some white hydrangeas. So to start, I'm just going to fill it with some water and then I wanna share a couple hacks I've seen on TikTok for floral arranging. So you can take some just clear scotch tape and kind of make this grid so that your flowers don't kind of just topple over and they kind of stay in place as to where you want them. 
I think this hack works really well for flowers that tend to lean like tulips and hydrangeas and things like that. Now, if you are like me and hydrangeas are one of your favorite flowers, I have a couple hacks for you. The first being if you have your hydrangeas kind of wilting the next day after you've brought them home from the grocery store, try just taking the petals and just literally dunking them and swirling them around in some water because that is how hydrangeas are actually absorbing the water is through their petals. So if you do this within a couple hours, your hydrangeas usually perk right back up. The other hack is to just take some boiling water, let it cool for just about a minute or so, and then dunk your stems in there. Leave it there for about an hour or so, and again, you'll see them perk right back up. So that can save you a lot of money and really give you longevity in your arrangements and make them just last that much longer. Moving right along into lighting options now. So Crate and Barrel has a lot of really beautiful lighting options and a lot of them incorporate metal, even if it's in the slightest detail. So these, for example, have this beautiful metal base, which I loved. So when I was at the Goodwill, I found this lamp here and I love this sort of mixed metal quality. I love mixing metal in my house. I think it gives you that high end look. But I loved this light here because it had an adjustable knob. So it wasn't like an all or nothing kind of lamp, which I thought was a nice feature. And it was only $8.60. And then I found this beauty here for just $7 at the Hartville Thrift Shop, which I thought was really underpriced for what it was. And I initially plugged it in, it didn't work. So I grabbed another light bulb just to see, I was like, maybe the light bulb was bad. And sure enough, it worked. And the metal I have in my office is a really specific tone of brass. So I just wanted to make sure that I'm staying in tune with that and the metal matched perfectly. It had this adjustable knob for height. I thought it made the perfect addition to my office space. Something like this at Crate and Barrel could be well over $400, but because I thrifted it, it was just $7. One thing I love that Crate and Barrel does is they almost create matching sets, which makes it so much easier when you're trying to style your pieces because everything looks kind of cohesive and it goes together. And one thing I've learned is if I really love a piece, just buy it then because the odds are eventually I will come across either a similar or a smaller version, just like in this scenario here or sometimes you do kind of find them simultaneously. So I found this large scale piece and then the smaller one, and that just helps when you're styling because they all look similar, but they're different in height and that just adds visual interest but I've really been loving these concrete planters at Crate and Barrel. I think they look really modern and really minimal, but they're really expensive. So when I found these at the Goodwill, they were each just $6 and then $5 for the longer one. So all in, we're at $11 for both of these planters. One problem though, they were just kind of shiny and they just looked like cheap kind of plastic, but the shape of these was absolute perfection. So I decided that I wanted to try this garden lime technique. I contemplated doing the plaster or even doing like a Henry's feather finish just to give it a more cement like look, but I decided to try this garden lime technique. I will share the blog post that I followed. She did hers on terracotta pots, so it's a different sort of reason for why she did it, but I basically just wanted to create a more textured surface that wasn't so uniform like this like faux snake print on these planters. So I added the garden lime to my bowl and then I added some water and you almost want it to get like a pancake batter consistency and then I just painted it on and let it dry. The garden lime definitely did its job in adding just some additional kind of texture to these planters that I was really hoping to have. And then I went in with, again, some ultra matte white spray paint that I used in the stone mirror project. And I'm just going to apply that all over these so I get that kind of minimal modern cement like look for these planters. Next up, let's talk about some pattern that you might see in Crate and Barrel, and it's a lot of geometric prints and patterns and things like that in their artwork, but also in their textiles. So whenever I'm out thrifting, that's definitely something I'm always looking for, and I found two of these pillows. Sure enough, they were from West Elm, so I grabbed them both. Now here's the deal. I don't have a space for these, and if there's one of you guys out there who would like me to send you these, I would gladly give them to a good home. So just either DM me on Instagram or leave me a comment down below to say interested in the pillows and I will wash these and ship them off to you if you are interested. As I mentioned earlier, we're gonna talk a little bit about bowl filler. So I would say most of the time, 
You can find cheaper bowl filler either at the thrift store or you can find it at Dollar Tree, but I love this bowl filler here. It's just under $8. It can fill a large scale bowl. You guys might remember this bowl from before. It was only a dollar and it gives this nice sort of summery vibe in my space, but was so affordable even from Crate and Barrel. This is definitely something I recommend purchasing from them. Another thing I noticed a lot of every time I'm in Crate and Barrel are cookbooks. And especially right now, it's kind of like grilling season, I think. So a lot of nice, good quality grill cookbooks, but they're $32. And I would just rather spend much less at the thrift store. So I found this beautiful cookbook. It was just two bucks at the Heartville Thrift Shop. I love the cover. The imagery inside is also beautiful. It's more about plating than it is cooking, but I think it fits in with my kitchen space so well, and it was so affordable. And last but certainly not least are marble and decorative objects. So when I'm in Crate and Barrel, again, fitting in with that minimal, that modern design aesthetic, you will see that material over and over and over again. And this arch set here will cost just under $40 and that's on sale at Crate and Barrel. So I found these beautiful marble bookends, which I actually like better, at the thrift store for just $1, originally from Target. So they're not from Crate and Barrel, but they definitely give off a similar look. Another way to kind of break up some uniformity of your decor pieces is to add these sort of like decorative objects. Now, I don't do this all the time, but I thought that this little white bird was modern and minimal and simple enough that I thought I could incorporate it in my space. But if those kind of decor elements aren't really your thing, I recommend just trying to find pottery and decor pieces that kind of look like they could also double as sculptures to kind of get that modern minimal look on a budget. And that about wraps it up for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments which project or which find was your favorite. And I will see you guys not next Sunday because it's Mother's Day, but the Sunday after that for some very fun DIY projects. I hope that everybody has a safe and happy Mother's Day and I will see you guys next time. Bye for now.